What's up guys, welcome to the Power World Starter Guide. These are all things that I wish that I knew when I first started out. Because I struggled a lot and it was painful. Okay, let's get started. Number one, these settings. Copy them. Multiplayer on, scroll all the way down. Items dropped on death, off. Okay, that's the key right there. Multiplayer on allows you to respawn at different points of the map. Items dropped on death, off means that you will not lose your items if you were to, you know, get killed, or if you were to die. The best part about this is that when you're in a dungeon, it gets kind of sketchy in there, you know? The pals, there's a lot of them, and if you go down with items dropped on death on, you don't get to have those items when you return back to life. There are other options uh, that you can alter in the settings. You can alter the XP rate, the capture rate, the resources rate, the resource spawn rate, the resource yield rate, the amount of time it can take to see another meteorite event or supply drop event, things like that you can alter. Whenever you teleport to a different island or whatever, there's gonna be some sort of islander there. We're not talking about a villager, we're talking islander, okay? They, they look sus, they look like they're just lost, okay? Uh, but they have this campfire next to them, so that's their indicator. Talk to them, you're gonna get some free stuff. This is extremely powerful in the early game, because free stuff is great, you know? Free stuff is great. As you begin leveling up through the game, you end up getting some stat points. One stat point equals a level, so use them wisely. They give you 50 each, so what I would recommend is putting them into weight. Okay, the more weight you got, the more stuff you got to work with. This means that you won't be stuck having to decide, oh, which one do I want to drop? Which one do I have to drop because I'm just too fat? Chapter 2, base locations. This is very important, okay? Base locations are for your main bases in addition to other uh, reasons to have a base out there. Who knows, really? But this is for the early game, so the base location that I would recommend you guys having is a nice flat open area that has plenty of natural resources okay now here's the kicker when you were if you were to build over said natural resource like a tree or a stone and you build over that respawn point it's not gonna respawn again so keep that in mind you only have you should only ever build over the spot of the natural resource when you have in a a portable node of that natural resource so if you build over a stone rock that gives you stone when you mine it you want to have a stone pit available so that you can still get that stone you follow good yeah so these bases they are end game bases but they are located in the beginning areas of the map these are literally the same locations that i've presented earlier in this video just built upon each other, built upon itself, so that I could just keep on advancing, 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 and treating it like an investment, where I put in more resources to get more resources, put in more resources to get more resources, and eventually it's just gonna become one ginormous mansion, one giant thing that just has a lot of stuff in it that you just keep on building and building and building and building on. Chapter 3, Base Pals. Now, this is for the early game, so keep that in mind. Alright, here we go. Number 1 will be Pengullet. Number two will be Chickpea. Number three will be Tansy. Number four will be Kativa. Number five is Fox Barks. And number six is Elk Dite. Number seven is Rush Ore. Now, these can be substituted, such as Pen King for Pen Gullet, R Socks for Fox Barks, Robin Quill for Tansy, and Tombat for Rush Ore. These are all pals you can find in the general early game area, so I recommend upgrading when you can. The best combat pals for early game. Here we go. Number one is Tombat. Number two is Incineram. Number three is Loopmon. Number four is Dire Howl. Number five is Robin Quill. Number six is the Xenovator. Number seven is Chillet. And number eight is Pen King. Disclaimer. So some elements aren't included, and the reason why is just because they're just not the greatest in the early game. And uh, through my own personal experience and observation, that they don't become uh, useful until you reach mid-game. Let's talk locations and specialty of the pals. Let's go. Tombats, they are pretty much found in the early game regions of the map. Uh, anywhere where the starting areas are except for the newest location. I have not found any of them. They are 
located through you just gotta spot the glowing red flares and their ability is that they can detect pals within a hundred radius i think it's a hundred meter radius might be less might be more don't know don't really care but what, it, what you can do to manipulate this is slot in more combats because each cooldown is independent of one another incinerams there is one location where you can get a free technically a free it's a very low level incinerum compared to the other incinerums that you can find so this one is found on the tippity top mountain just a little bit north of the spirit tree or i think it's north i don't it's just it's just nearby anyways he is very weak level 10 okay you just gotta get a couple levels up and do your magic boom you get him now here's the kicker he has an active known as flame claw hunter which really just means that you will command incineram to use his active his special exclusive ability which is known as hellfire claw i don't know why they make them both like this it's, it's kind of counterintuitive but anyways he and along with other um personal active pals can cast their special ability twice you get to command it once and then the pal will be able to command it themselves and they both share their own independent cooldown which is the great part about it he is a dark pal that does fire damage okay okay so lupmon found by the swordsman teleport aka bushi he is a dark pal lupmon is a dark pal with the power of the claws glistening in the dark that's his exclusive uh pal skill i guess partner skill so to speak and it's very similar i think it's the exact same attack as the incineram and they slice twice they claw twice and deal a lot of damage they're melee oriented pals so they gotta get in and get dirty right so they go balls deep with their little claw attack and then they have their aoe ability shadow burst in addition they can have dark arrow they can have poison sludge you can even slot in any other dark ability or any other ability to begin with but they are melee they specialize in melee so just keep that in mind dire howl your first normally your first ground mount he's very speedy fast and has some decent combat prowess he is a neutral power however who is weak to technically everything but he has a spammable skill known as Fierce Fang. It's his exclusive skill. With this, you're able to propel yourself a short distance at, huts, at pals. And it does a bit of damage, I will say. It pierces them, along with its power shot ability. And overall, it's one of the better early game ground mount pals that is combat ready. Robin Grill, located in this specific area, right by the two knights waypoint. Now, here's the kicker. He is late early game, okay? So, with that being said, you want to really come here prepared. Takes a bit of uh, some damage to take him down, and when you do, you're golden. He does a lot of damage. He's a great combat pal. He has some sidestep capabilities, which is pretty darn amazing. And he has the ability, the grass ability called Focus Shot. Not Power Shot, Focus Shot. He takes up a stance and aims his bow, and BOOM! Takes him out. Real fast very precise his partner skill is not that specific ability instead it's that it enhances your damage towards weak spots such as the head of pals by 20 percent and then it scales upwards uh per rank so yeah it, it it he's broken he's amazing i honestly i wish that he had higher base stats because then if he did i would totally use him in the end game Xenovator, another dark pal. This one is only spawned from the meteorite events in the early game region. If you go into the mid to late game areas, he will not you will not see the Xenovators there. Now here's the kicker. These guys are dark pals, so they have a knack for blinding enemy pals, so you have a, a little bit of leeway whenever they get blinded. So he has the ability to use Umbral Surge. It is a cone-like sprouted ability so to speak and he has a nightmare ball which is also another sought after pal ability it's very much obtainable through uh fruits and whatnot but for a pal to innately have it is just wonderful now he eventually in the later regions of the game once you scale him up a bit he will have access to his exclusive skill which is evil slash it's very much similar to the loop bonds claw ability in addition to the uh what's the guy's name is called uh Incineram's ability, Hellfire Claw, very much similar. I don't know why they wanted to make them so similar, but it, it's still a very powerful ability, low code and whatnot. So yeah, they bring a lot to the table in terms of base powers, but combat prowess, combat-wise, very strong.
very strong in the world of attack very low defense i will say that much pen king one of the more notable pals that most people are very much familiar with so he is found in the sealed realm of the frozen wings he has an exclusive skill known as emperor slide where he lies in his belly and thrusts in a specific direction towards enemies Whee! literally mowing down any pal in its way or human for that matter um, he has access to Iceberg, which is a very powerful ice ability, which actually has the chance at frozen enemies. Freezing, my bad. Freezing enemies. That was weird English. Anyways, um, yeah. Not only is it Iceberg, but he also has access to the, one of the more favorable ice abilities known as Blizzard Spike, which is end game. We're talking very far into the depths of end game. But regardless, he's one of the more powerful pals for both combat and base. Last but not least is Chilla. So Chilla is a dragon ice type pal. He is dragon type while dealing ice damage. He has an exclusive skill ability where he has its title as rocket jump. He throws himself into the air and lands at a pal. Lunges technically and does a lot of damage. It can deal AOE damage and it can deal single target damage. Both the same. Now his dragon, sorry, his exclusive uh, partner skill is that he increases your the, the player's attack while wow, he's out by the way it has to be mounted increases the player attack by 50 percent in addition to changing your attack damage type to dragon you'll see this purpley hueish application upon your attacks and uh honestly it's pretty powerful now i would recommend using or uh, letting the pal use its own ability aside from you using it because it's kind of hard to aim kind of hard to time because the damage applies when you when he lunges through the pal in addition when he lands on them now if you miss one of them you're missing out on some of the damage so that's the that's the thing leave it to the ai now he is technically i from my experience he excels in melee which with dragon burst uh, as his secondary and dragon cannon as his ranged attack while his primary is Rocket Jump, which is on a very low cooldown, 6 second timer, Dragon Cannon's on a 2 second timer, and Dragon Burst is on a 10 second timer. Now if you pop, pop in some nice uh, passive skills, he's gonna be golden. Okay guys, so that's about it for the video. We're just gonna do a mild recap, number 1, multiplayer on, number 2, tweak the settings to your liking. If you are playing solo, definitely enhance that meteorite timer to the down numbers. You know, higher numbers means more minutes, lower numbers means less minutes in terms of the spawn rate. So the lower the better. Um, additionally, you want to make sure that you're putting your points into the weight. You can obviously get armor and stuff that will enhance your defenses, your health, your weaponry, its firepower, but you know, weight you can't change. You, you can only get a certain amount of accessories that can enhance or alter your overall amount of you know weight that you can carry and then you want to take into consideration the base pals the base locations and the combat pals and play to your liking play to your own personal uh, experiences and, and opinions and whatnot and it's, it's up to you how you plan to pan out your your gameplay but these are just uh, opinions and these are just um, uh, suggestions that you guys should well, not should, but you guys could technically use. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. My name is Jess. Please leave a like and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Peace!